Dalu un sallu għalaj sunimis, jusju għusju batiru bandu kratur, bħxu jisib nuot jintini għum, xobini men, rħamna, Allah rħamna. Lajsa l-ena ma jimfxe da edna wa diħat naswek. Allah ma għanna msaħkina għanna kull bħkull xukri. Abena l-ladi fissema għajn. 
بولس اسمه ياتي من اكو اكو من شيتو ما في زمان كذلك قرار الارض اعطينا اليوم واغفر لنا ذنوبنا كما نغفر نحن ايضا المذنبين الينا ولا تدخلنا في تجربه لكن نجينا من الشرير بالمسيح صار ربنا لنا لك الملك والقوه والمجد الى الابد امين امبرستوس ايسوس بن شويس Let us give thanks to the beneficial and merciful God, the Father of our Lord, God and Savior, Jesus Christ. For he has covered us, held with us, guarded us, accept us to himself, spared us, supported us, brought us to this hour. Let us also ask him, God, the Bandukra, to guard us in this holy day, all the days of our life. Let us pray. Lord of mercy. Evening. Ebb shoy sevno evyod bi bandokra. على كل حال ومن أجل كل حال وفي كل حال لأنك سترتنا وعنتنا وحفظتنا وقبلتنا إليك أشفقت علينا وعدتنا وأتيت بنا إلى ذي الساعة أطلب لك يا رحمن الله ويترف علينا ويسمعنا ويعيننا ويقبل إليه سؤالات وطلبات قديسي منهم بالصلاح عنا في كل حين وأن يحفظ لنا وعلينا حياة وقيام أبينا الأب البطريرك المكرم البابا تودروس الثاني وشريكه في الخدمة الرسولية أبينا المطران المكرم الأنبا يوسف وشريكهما في الخدمة الرسولية أبينا الأسقف المكرم الأنبا أرشيليديس وشركائهم في الخدمة الرسولية أبائنا الأساقف المكرمين المجتمعين معنا ويغفر لنا خطايانا يا رب complete this holy day all the days of our life in all peace with thy fear all enemy all temptation all the work of Satan the counsel of the wicked men and the work of the devil do cast away from us and from all 
your people and from this holy place that is yours. But those things which are good and profitable provide for us, for you are the one give us authority to trade and serve and scorpion and upon all the power of the enemy.
In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God, I mean. May be seated, everyone. Your Eminence is the Archbishops, the Metropolitans. Your Grace is the Bishops, your Reverences, the Hegemons and Priests. Your Excellency, the Ambassador. Our distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Thank you for coming to share with us the joy of receiving the first ever residing people, Becker and General Bishop of the Coptic Orthodox Archdiocese of Toronto, His Grace, Amba Archilides. According to our usual customs of Coptic hospitality and love, we'd like to introduce our distinguished ecclesiastical guests who are from outside of the Coptic Orthodox Church first. Humbly, we'll ask you to stand that we might recognize you. His Eminence Cardinal Collins, the Archbishop of the Roman Catholic Church of the Archdiocese of Toronto. His Grace Abuna Dimitrios of the Ethiopian Orthodox Church, the Archbishop of Eastern Canada. We are also expecting uh, the arrival of Amber Carolus William. Amber Carolus William is the Metropolitan of Asyut from the Coptic Catholic Church, and he is now the Apostolic Visitor of North America. He will be coming soon, God willing. We also have with us here other priests who are representing their bishops. We have Father Hayari Tanashian representing <laughs> His Grace Bishop Abgar Havakomian from the Armenian Orthodox Church. And we have with us also Father Georgos Elkesho representing His Grace Bishop Elia Bahi from the Syriac, Copti from the Syriac Orthodox. Father Mibratu Gebru of the Ethiopian Orthodox Cathedral of Toronto. And, and Father Louis Mello from the Roman Catholic Church, the Office for Promoting Christian Unity. <laughs> Father Walid Al Khouri from the Maronite Catholic Church, Our, Our Lady of Lebanon Parish of Toronto. Father Walid, El Kitir Shukr, Ahla And we're also expecting the arrival of Father Fadi Bokhtar from the Catholic Coptic Church as well. And <clears throat> we have with us um, Reverend Nagy Saeed from the Arabic Presbyterian Church in Markham, Ontario. <clears throat> and we have someone here, another distinguished guest, who is the one also promoting unity among all Christians in Canada. And this is Pastor Peter Notboom, the General Secretary of the Canadian Council of Churches. Now we'll move to our uh, uh, fathers, the hierarchs of the Coptic Orthodox Church. His Eminence Amba Yusuf, Metropolitan of the Diocese of the Southern United States.
His Eminence was just elevated to the rank of Metropolitan less than a week ago. And um, for many years, he was presiding over the largest Coptic Orthodox diocese in the whole world until we claimed that title here in Canada after Amba Mina came, because Amba Mina's diocese extends all the way from Pearson Airport to Vancouver and from the south border with the United States all the way to the North Pole. And um, your eminence, whether uh, your, your diocese is arguably the first or the second largest, but you have a very large space in our hearts. His Grace Ambayustos, the abbot of the Monastery of St. Anthony the Great in Egypt. His Grace Ambayustos is the bishop of the monastery that offered to us His Grace Ambayustos. His Grace Amba David, the Bishop of New York and New England. And we have with us, we have with, with us also His Grace Amba Daniel, Bishop of Sydney, Australia. Ben Rahabika Sayyidna Bugulika Hababa Kashara. And we have with us honor to have His Grace Amba Ermeya, the General Bishop of the Coptic Orthodox Cultural Center in Egypt. We also have with us His Grace Amba Daniel, the Abbot of St. Chinuda Monastery in Sydney. One more time in the Sudanese dialect, I would say to Sayyidna Amba Daniel, Hababa Kashara Sayyidna Mlawarna Ktir. His Grace Ambamina, Bishop of Mississauga, Vancouver, in Western Canada, wished to be with us, but he was prevented and he's still in Egypt. Abuna Angelo Saad, representing the diocese. His Grace Ambamar, Bishop of Goshen. His Grace Ambamar does, does not need any introduction. He has been with us for six years presiding over this archdiocese and he has done a great job. I would like you to give him another round of applause. His Grace Amba Seraphim, Bishop of the Coptic Orthodox Diocese of Ohio, Michigan and Indiana. His Grace Amba Peter, Bishop of North Carolina, South Carolina, and Kentucky. His Grace Amba Boulis, Bishop of Ottawa, Montreal, and Eastern Canada. His Grace Amba Basil, Auxiliary Bishop of the Diocese of the Southern United States of America. His Grace Amba Gregory, Auxiliary Bishop for the Diocese of the Southern United States of America. His Grace Amba Gabriel, General Bishop for the Archdiocese of North America and New Jersey. We also have with us here another representative, very dear friend from the Armenian Orthodox Church, His uh, Reverence Father Vartan. Would you stand up, please? <clears throat> Father Vartan and Father Hayari from the Armenian Church, they both speak Arabic very well. Ahla wa sahla biikum. Sharaftuna. Shnar hakali mabuna. I'd like to introduce another one in a very different way. As we all gather here today to share the joy of receiving His Grace Ambar Shalidis, there is someone else who is present with us, with his spirit. Someone is in heaven praying for us, and I'm sure he's with us with his prayers. The one who established 
the Coptic Orthodox Church in North America. We're all grateful to him, the late Father Marcus Marcus. And now we move to our distinguished guests, the diplomats and states people. I would like to start with someone who's so close to my heart. I dare to say that I fell in love with him from at the first glance. This is His Excellency, the Ambassador of Egypt to Canada, Mr. Ahmed Hafiz. We're also honored to have with him the General Consul of Egypt in Canada, residing in Montreal. He came all the way from Montreal, Mr. Mohamed Fakhri. <laughs> Mr. Paul Chiang, the MP for Markham Unionville, was supposed to be with us, but he has the sudden death in his family, and uh, he sent his regrets. Our condolences to his family. And we have with us also Mr. Sharif Sabawi. He's the Coptic Orthodox MPP in the provincial parliament for Mississauga Air Mills. And also we have with us another dear friend who can speak Arabic too and Armenian. And he is the MPP for Scarborough Agent Court, very close friend to this parish, Mr. Aris Babikian. And she says, Eric, Shnor Hakalim. And uh, we have with us also the MPP for Markham Thornhill, Mr. Logan Kanapathy. So we are in his territory. This cathedral is within his riding. Thank you for being with us, Mr. Kanapathy. And uh, about half an hour from now, the mayor of Markham will honor us with his presence because he had some other engagement that had been planned long time ago, Mr. Frank Scrapidi. <laughs> Along with him in the same council of the city of Markham, we have with us another dear friend, the councilor of, of Ward 8 here that belongs to the, church, to the cathedral, Mrs. Issa Lee. And we have another Orthodox councillor with us. He represents the writing where the old church, the mother church is. And this is Mr. Nick Mantas and his wife, Gina. <laughs> Gina, stand up, please. We'd like to offer special gratitude to the great job done by the scouts of St. George and St. Mark here. They received Sayedna with the drums. It was a beautiful reception. Now we'd like to introduce um, our choir here. They will come and chant for Sayedna and for all our distinguished guests to share with us the joy of receiving Sayyidna and Bar Shilidis. The choir, please come forward. Good afternoon, Your Grace, Bishop Bar Shilidis, our beloved bishops, priests, and deacons, honored and distinguished guests, and our congregation. St. Mark's Choir and the Unity Choir of the GTA are overjoyed and blessed today to join this joyful event. The church is enlightened with your presence. With these loving and simple words, we want to welcome His Grace.
الكنيسة نورت يا برشليدس فرحتنا بيك فوق الخيال ما تتوصفش يا هدية ربنا لينا في تورونتو يا بختنا بيك يا راينا امبرشليدس شرفتنا وباركتنا فرحتنا ونورتنا يلي فيك صرت المسيح راينا وحبيبنا كلنا ماري مرقص قدوتك في خدمتك ودع حب وقلب مليان كل خير خدمة وطهارة ملجأ وسندة لناس كتير يا بختنا بيك يا راعينا أمبر شليدس فرحتنا ونورتنا يلي فيك صرت المسيح راينا وحبيبنا كلنا And now the English choir will make a presentation to welcome Sayyidna as well.
Christ's love brought it to us in word and deed the light of Jesus many a mile plenty a day through the desert sun you walk the way pillar to the Lord to Egypt come most precious gift Yeah. 
Until the English choir receives the blessing uh, of His Grace, Ambar Shalidis, I would like to acknowledge the arrival of His Eminence, Amba Antonius William. Please stand up, Sayyidna. <laughs> Pleasure to have His Eminence with us. Sayyidna is the Emeritus Metropolitan of Asyut. He is he's very Saidi. But he speaks at least five languages. He speaks English, French, Italian, Hebrew, Greek, and he has a PhD in uh, the Holy Bible. Thank you to have your eminence with us. I would like to uh, call up His Grace Amba Ma'ar for the first speech. Uh, Amba Ma'ar served as uh, the Pope's representative here in the area for over six years and quietly paved the way uh, for the day that has reached us now to have a residing bishop here in the area. Thank you, Sayyid. من له العروس فهو العريس أما صديق العريس فيقف ويفرح عندما يسمع صوت العريس فرحي الآن قد كمل حقيقة الحقيقة أنا سعيد جدا اليوم بالنسبة لي هو يوم مفرح كنت لسه بتكلم مع حد من الأباط فبيقول النهاردة عيد قلت له لا بالنسبة لي أكتر من عيد حقيقة هذه المنطقة منطقة تورونتو أنا خدمت فيها حوالي أكتر من ست سنين حوالي سبع سنين فعشان كده هحط قدام سيدنا قدامكم كلكم ثلاث نقط أساسية أول نقطة المنطقة هنا محتاجة مزيد من أنشطة الشباب شباب كندا هو من أعلى شباب كندا هو أعلى كواليفيكيشن كلنا بنحب نعلم ولادنا كلنا بندخلهم جامعات حتى لو كان اوفرسيز بنبعت لندن بنبعت مصر بنبعت اي بلاد بعيده عشان نعلمهم ودي نقطه مهمه جدا اعلى كواليفيكيشن وفي نفس الوقت شباب بيحب الكنيسه جدا محبتهم للكنيسه عاليه ايه اللي ناقص ناقص المايسترو، ناقص الكوندكتر الذي يعزف سيمفونية الحب مع كل هذا الشباب. النقطة الثانية النقطة الثانية محتاجين مزيد من الافتقاد للعائلات. حقيقة في العالم الغربي في العالم الغربي المفرمة عالية كل واحد هنا بيجي بيشتغل بيتفرم في هذا العالم ولكن يبقى أننا نحتاج لكلمة حلوة ترطب قلوبنا اللي محتاجين لافتقاد حد يسأل علينا وهذا ما ما يلقي ثقل أنا عارف على نيافة أنبا أرشليدس لكن أنا متأكد تماما أن هذه ستكون أولوية من أولويات هذا الأب الأسقف الوقور حاجة الثالثة اللي أنا أتمنى فعلا أن تكون لها الأولوية 
ان احنا نحقق الحلم اللي كان بيحلم بيه ابونا مرقص كلنا عارفين ان ابونا مرقص كان نفسه انه يبني هنا مقر للارشي دايسوس لكن يمكن المشروع اتاخر شويه لكن ما فيش مانع ان احنا نبتدي ناسس الارش ده ان شاء الله في مكان في فيلا صغيره بجانب اي كنيسه من الكنايس كلنا طبعا عارفين المقر اللي موجود في سيدر جروف في نيو جيرسي ومعانا هنا ابهات او اساقفه خدموا في هذا المقر كثيرا ابتدى بفيلا صغيره النهارده بيبنوا كاتدرائيه جنبيه وبيتوسعوا وبيعملوا حاجات حلوه كتير نتمنى ان يكون يكون هناك الأرشي دايسوس هنا في تورونتو ويكون نيافة أنبا أرشليدس هو أول أسقف يخدم في هذه المنطقة كأسقف مستديم ويكفينا الأسقف الطاير اللي مسافر وراجع ومسافر وراجع وما احناش عارفين كفاية عليه كده فرحي هذا قد كمل ثلاث نقط احطهم قدام نيافه انبا ارشليدس وقدامكم كلكم ربنا يبارك خدمته ويرينا ثمار كثيره ثلاثين وستين ومئة لالهنا المجد دائما ابديا امين Thank you سيدنا for those wonderful words it gives me a great deal of pleasure i'm honored to introduce the next speaker I would like to introduce His Excellency, the Ambassador, the Egyptian Ambassador, ambassador to Canada, Mr. Ahmad Hafiz. Mr. Ahmad Hafiz, Fadal Siatak, already visited us here at the cathedral and he met with the, most of the priests of the area. I want to say something just in Arabic about him. We're so impressed with his nice and pleasant and loving personality. واحد من الاباء الكهنه قال له عاوزينك تيجي تكلم الشباب انت هتكون يعني مثال جيد للشباب بتاعنا. ف فخامه السفير قال طبعا احب اكلم الشباب وبعضهم بفكر شويه قال لا الشباب انا مش هجي لهم هنا هم يجوا لي عندي في بيتي في اوتوا وانا اعزمهم على الغداء واكلمهم زي ما هم عاوزين. صباح الخير مش عارف الصوت واضح ها اولا نورتنا وشرفتنا نيافه الحبر الجليل الانبا ارشليدس الاسقف العام لتورونتو ووسط كندا والحقيقه انا بتشرف بوجود نيافتك يعني أصحاب النيافة، الآباء الأساقفة، والآباء الكهنة جميعاً برضو بحييهم اللي منهم ناس كتير زرتهم في خلال الثمان أسابيع اللي أنا يعني جيت فيها كندا لأني لسه مستجد ومع ذلك أنا سعيد أني جيت هنا عشان أكون في استقبال نيافتك وأنا سعيد Sure, okay. And don't worry, I'll say this in English for whoever don't understand what I just said. So I will translate for myself. أولا أنا حبيت بس أقول إنه في إطار الترتيبات الجميلة اللي كانت معمولة لنيافتك ولما أبونا أمونيوس قال لي إن أنا يعني هتشرف بالحضور الحقيقة قررت إن أنا ما أقومش بإعداد كلمة وقررت إن أنا يعني على عكس المراسم الرسمية إن أنا أخد حظي وأكلم من قلبي فأنا اليوم بتكلم من قلبي وبقول يعني مرحبا بك في كندا مرحبا بك في مصر في بيتك في كنيستك في وسط شعبك ومرحبا بك وده الأهم نيافتك مرحبا بك في قلوبنا الحقيقة في متواجدين هنا الشعب كله بعتبره ممثلين لمصر مش أنا بس أنا واحد جاي من القاهرة كسفير لكن الحقيقة بعتبر كل اللي موجودين ممثلين لمصر و 
وأحب أقول لنيافتك إنه كل اللي التقيت بيهم في كندا من الكنديين وغيرهم بيشيدوا بشعبك وبيشيدوا بالمصريين اللي هنا وبالفعل بيعتبروا كل واحد هنا ممثل لمصر وبيجسد الشخصية المصرية على أفضل وجه أما النهاردة بنيافتك بوجودك الحقيقة أنا بعتبر إن ليكم هنا سفير للشعب فنيافة الحبر الجليل السفير الأنبا أرشليدس Your Grace Anba Arshilidis, uh, Your Eminences, Your Graces, Cardinal, Archbishop, Bishops, Fathers, Reverends, Pastors. Uh, today I was just telling His Grace that we are welcoming Him not only to Canada and not only to the Church, not only to Egypt, and I insist we are in Egypt at the moment, but also we welcome Him in our hearts. I was also telling His Grace that as we were uh, undergoing the preparations, I have insisted that I'm not going to actually come with a, an official address or a statement, but rather take my chance and just speak uh, from my heart, just like I'm trying to translate now from my heart. And I was telling His uh, Grace that we are so happy that he is here with us and that each Egyptian sitting here amongst us in this church and in Canada represents Egypt as a representative of his community, of Egypt, the country that I know, and they know, and they love, so does all of we, with his grace. So today I say that all of us are, ambass are ambassadors of Egypt and his grace Amba Arshilidis, the general bishop, is also the ambassador of Egypt. Now, we're going to be able to do it, and inshallah, you're going to be able to do it, and you're going to be able to do it, and you're going to Thank you for those heartfelt words, Your Eminence. would like to call upon Mr. Mohamed Fakhri, General Consul of Egypt in Canada, for a few words. أن أشارك معكم اليوم في هذا الاحتفال بالغ الأهمية للترحيب الرسمي بالأنبا أرشيليتس أسقف عاما للإبراشية تورونتو وأود أود أن أعرب بالأصالة عن نفسي وبالنيابة عن زملائي بالكنسولية العامة لجمهورية مصر العربية في مونتريال بأخلص التهاني إلى إلى نيافة الأنبا أرشليدس والأنبا الكهنة وأبناء الجالية المصرية الكرام وذلك بهذه المناسبة المباركة إن الكنيسة القبطية هي كنيسة وطنية مصرية خالصة ذات جذور تمتد إلى عماك التاريخ وهي من أبرز الكنائس الرائدة في التواصل مع أبنائها سواء كانوا في الوطن الأم في مصر أو في المهجر مهما بعدت المسافات. His Grace Amba Makar. His Grace Amba Archilidas, Papal Vicar and General Bishop for the Archdiocese of Toronto. Members of the clergy of the Coptic Orthodox Church, members of the Egyptian community, Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, 
I would like to express my sincere congratulations to His Grace Bishop's Archilidus as the first ever papal vicar for the Coptic Orthodox Archdiocese of, the, of Toronto. It is a great honor and privilege to join today the Coptic Orthodox Church in these celebrations, welcoming His Grace Bishop Archilidus. I would like to thank the Assembly of Priests of the Coptic Orthodox Archdiocese for the invitation to attend this special and memorable occasion. As I arrived only a few weeks ago to take up my new responsibilities as Egypt's Consul General in Montreal, I feel truly fortunate to be presently serving in Canada and have the, uh, have the opportunity to personally witness this milestone event. As one reflects on the history of the Coptic Orthodox Church in Canada, I would like to highlight that the Coptic Orthodox Church has been an important part of the success story of the Egyptian community here in Canada. The Egyptian community which has settled in Canada has brought energy and ingenuity and has enriched this country in all aspects of social, cultural, political, and economic life. I would also like to highlight that the Coptic Orthodox Church in Canada has played a significant role in promoting and preserving the strong bonds between Copts living in this country and their homeland in Egypt. Ladies and gentlemen, in close, allow, uh, I would like to wish His Grace Bishop Archilidus and the Coptic Orthodox Archdiocese of uh, Toronto continue its success. وكما قال سعادة السفير أحمد حافظ سفير جمهورية مصر العربية في 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 أوتوا وسفيرنا في كندا أرجو أن نكون جميعا عند حسن ظن يفتك شكرا جزيلا شكرا جزيلا I'm really honored and blessed to introduce the next speaker. He's so dear to my heart, a very eloquent and yet very deeply spiritual speaker. I always learn from his wisdom when he talks. We have with us today, Amber Youssef, who was elevated recently to be a Metropolitan Congratulations, Sayyidna, and please come and teach us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. This is the day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We thank God who brought us to the joy of this day in which the Archdiocese of Toronto receive the blessed Father, His Grace, Bishop Archilides, uh, to start his service and his ministry here in the Archdiocese. And on this occasion, I like to express my thanksgiving and gratitude to our Father, His Holiness Pope Tawadros II, for his great care and love and paying attention to all these areas outside Egypt to appoint blessed fathers and bishops to a pastor, the shepherd, the, the sheep and the flock in this area. And on this occasion, I remember the verse of St. Paul in Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 17, in which he said, Obey those who rule over you and be submissive, for they watch out for your souls 
as those who must give account, let them do so with joy and not with grief, for that would be unprofitable for you. Basically, St. Paul is saying, when we obey and be submissive to our fathers, whom actually God entrusted to watch over us and over our souls, and our fathers in the last day will give an account before God, give an account of your stewardship. So when we obey them and when we are submissive to them, they will do their ministry with joy and not with grief. And St. Paul concluded by saying, for that would be unprofitable for you. So if we give hard time to our fathers, then actually this will be unprofitable for us. St. Paul is instructing us to let our fathers do their ministry and their service with joy. Otherwise, they will be uh, doing it with grief, and this will reflect back on us. It will be unprofitable for us. So I thought, what actually makes the heart of the bishop rejoice? What makes the heart of the bishop happy and glad? And quickly, I like to mention seven points for us as congregation to keep it in our mind. Because if we keep these seven points in our minds and we make our Father serving us with joy, not with grief, then we will benefit. The, the first point is the unity and the oneness. When all of us serve together with one heart, with unity, this actually will make the heart of our beloved Father the Bishop is happy. What grieves the heart of the father when he sees his children are divided against each us, against each other. And as the Lord Jesus Christ told us, a kingdom divided against itself will be brought to desolation. So it's not in our benefit and it is not actually it doesn't give joy to our father when he finds a split and division among his children. The second point is submission and obedience. When we obey our father and we don't give him hard time, any bishop when he starts his ministry, he has a vision and we need actually to help the bishop in fulfilling this vision. This actually will benefit us. But some people, unfortunately, they resist and stand against any decision, any regulation, and this will not be in our favor. As St. Paul said, obey those who rule over you. Obedience and submission make the heart of our fathers joyful and happy. Number three, when all of us, we participate effectively in the ministry and the service. One person cannot do everything, but as St. Peter said, as each one has received a gift, minister it to one another as good stewards of the manifold degrees of God. So each one of us has a gift. God entrusted you with a gift. You need to use his gift to edify the church of God, to edify the children of God. The bishop by himself, the priest by himself cannot do everything. You need actually to participate effectively and to see what is your gift, what's your talent, and participate in the ministry. Number, five, number four, actually keeping the faith and without any compromise, we defend our faith. Our fathers, St. Mark, as we heard in the uh, 
from the English choir. St. Mark shed his blood in order to defend the faith. So we should actually keep the sound doctrine and we defend our faith and we'll be very strong in defending our faith. Nowadays, many people preach different doctrines. We did not receive it from the apostles. We did not receive it from our Lord Jesus Christ. But we need to be defenders of the faith and protectors of the faith. And we need to examine our faith all the time with the teaching of the scripture as well as the teaching of the early church fathers. Number five, the commitment and the dedication. Commitment in attending the services of the church, liturgies, vespers, youth meeting, send our children for Sunday school, for um, any activities. So when actually uh, the priest or the bishop come and doesn't find people around him, how he can serve? How he can serve is he is by, by himself. We need to be committed, committed in our uh, attendance to the several activities of the church. When we gather together, as we say in the divine liturgy, he made us unto himself an assembled people. When we assemble together, and when we gather together, we support one another, we strengthen one another. This fellowship and the spirit of commitment and dedication is very important. In the New Testament, if you compare the verses that has one another, like love one another, serve one another, um, support one another, you will find more than 50 different verses, which means we have responsibility toward one another. Your commitment and your dedication will, will fulfill this spirit of fellowship. And number six is our repentance and living a godly life. As the Lord Jesus Christ said, the heaven rejoices when one lost sheep return back to the sheepfold. What makes the heart of a father rejoice when the lost sheep return back to the sheepfold. We need to live the life of repentance, life of godliness, life of holiness. This actually brings joy to heaven and brings joy to our fathers and brings joy to the rest of the believers. And the last point, uh, respect the responsibilities and the time of uh, the bishop and our fathers in general. Uh, Moses, when he started to counsel the people by himself, his father-in-law, he told him, this is not good for you. Appoint with you and delegate with you people who can help you in this responsibility. So that's why with the bishop, there are clergy, and with the clergy, there are Sunday school coordinators, there are board of deacon, there are deacons, there are servants, many, many different ranks help the bishop. But some people actually go directly to the bishop for everything. This actually putting pressure on his time. St. Paul one time mentioned, God did not send me to baptize, but to preach. What does this mean? Definitely, he is not belittling the importance of baptism. But as an apostle, he understood his responsibility. His responsibility is to establish churches and to preach the word of God. That's why he said God did not send me to baptize, but to preach. In the same way, we need to respect the responsibility of the bishop. So we should not actually put stress or strain on his time. So we can give him opportunity to use his time effectively for the glory of God. If actually we keep these seven points in our hearts, then as St. Paul said, our father will do his ministry and his responsibility with joy and not with grief. For that, 
if he is doing his responsibility with grief, St. Paul said, would be unprofitable for you. I congratulate all of you for this joyful day that God sent a faithful and a blessed father to serve you and to be uh, your episcopus, overseers, l looking from above for the needs of his congregation and attending to the needs of the congregation. May the Lord, through your prayers and through the prayers of St. Mary, Mother of God, and St. Mark, bless the ministry of your grace. And always, always, we hear beautiful and successful things about your grace. Glory be to God forever and ever. Amen. Thank you, Sayeda, for those valuable words. Highly appreciated. I just would like to recognize the arrival of uh, some more distinguished guests. Uh, I can see now in the audience Mr. Paul Chiang, the MP for Markham Unionville. And despite the funeral in his family, he, yet he made the time and came. Thank you so much. And we have with us also Mr. Sharif Sabawi. He's the only Coptic Orthodox MP in the provincial. Thank you so much for being with us. And he is representing uh, Mr. Doug Ford, our premier, as well. Thank you again. It's a joy to introduce the next speaker. He's a very known speaker, renowned speaker all over the city and the province. Hardly ever you go to any ecumenical gathering without seeing him and listening to him as the keynote speaker. Very eloquent, very wise and he delivers his speeches and talks in a graceful way that goes right to the heart. I'm so pleased to introduce to you His Eminence, Thomas Gardner Collins. Your Grace, Archbishop Bargelides, welcome, welcome to this area, to Toronto, and uh, to this community. I, uh, I just wish to express on behalf of the people of the Archdiocese of Toronto and from my own heart, um, a deep feeling of welcome. It is uh, a wonderful thing in the, in the, the Coptic community. It is uh, something which is an inspiration for us all as we see the example of fidelity and of deep, profound commitment to the Lord Jesus, which speaks to the whole world and is found in the example and the witness of the Coptic community. And so I, I thank you and welcome you as you come here to undertake your mission, your pastoral mission here, and particularly on, be, on behalf of uh, Pope Tawadros, who I remember came right here uh, many years ago, and what a joy it was to have him here as well in our midst. In the ancient tradition of the church, St. Peter and St. Mark are very close together. They often are related to one another, particularly through the Gospel of Mark. And I think that is a, a kind of a sign of the close relationship between the um, Pope Francis and Pope Tawardros, uh, between the, the Catholic Church and the Coptic Church. Uh, it is something that is a treasure for us all. I haven't checked with Pope Francis to say this, but as a cardinal of the Roman Church, I can think, on behalf of Pope Francis, welcome as well. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm ad-libbing that part, but I'm sure it's, it's, it's proper. It is true that we look back to the tremendous uh, example of the way in which we have worked together for the glory of God and the service of the people. And I think it is important, though, to keep in mind that uh, as we look into the world today, we think of the witnessing to Christ in this world, that sometimes it takes the form of martyrdom, which, of course, is what witness, martyr, originally the same word. And, and I, I think of my own studies uh, many years ago when my bishop sent me to Rome to study the apocalypse, how there were two great dangers which uh, the Christian people faced and challenges. One was uh, the, the danger and the threat of 
martyrdom in our modern sense where the blood of martyrs is the seed of the church. And that certainly is true throughout the world, all around the world today. But it was also in the days of the apocalypse, it was also in the more sophisticated or the, the less obvious ways in which we face challenge as Christians in this world. And I think in our world here, this world in which you take up this ministry of pastoral love and care, uh, the, the dangers are hidden somewhat. It is secularism, it is the advance of what can truly be called the culture of death, but done so in, in, in clever ways, and ways that seem to be so smooth, so harmless, and yet which are a profound uh, danger to all of the people. And I know that uh, we work together in that. We work together to witness to Christ. And the challenges in different places are different. But here there is a very real challenge of the advance of secularism and a way which very much suppresses the witness, the light of Christ, seeks to do so. And so in that it is all the more important that all of the disciples of the Lord be joined together in witnessing to the Lord through the integrity of our lives in Christ, through our love for one another. See how these Christians love one another was also the seed of the church. And in the way in which we can find ways that our communities can cooperate, share, work together, pray for one another, be witnesses together, so that the light of Christ may shine ever more brightly in this world in which to which the Lord has sent us as a, on a mission of service to let the light of the good news of Christ shine more brightly here. And so I know that uh, in the almost 16 years I've been Archbishop here, the relationship with the Coptic Church has been one of the joys of my life. And I am deeply appreciative of uh, the witness to Christ shown by the Coptic people of this area. And I assure you of my love, my prayers, my support, my pledge of cooperation in any possible way so that together we might witness to the Lord and be true and faithful. Thank you very much, Cardinal Collins. And now we'll call upon Father John Rumsey, the Archpriest of St. Mark's Cathedral here in Markham, Ontario, for a few words. Thank you very much, Abuna John. I don't know what to say after all these good words that were uh, said this morning, but uh, I didn't know what to say as of yesterday even, because I, have, I hadn't seen His grace yet. So yesterday I went and met him, and we had a very nice encounter for quite a couple of hours. And uh, one thing that was always present in that discussion, even though I did not mention it, Your Grace, was a spirit of Father Marcus. The spirit of Father Marcus was always on my mind while I was talking with his grace. And and then I said, now I can prepare a word to say in the reception of his grace. And I went home and the only thing that I had on my mind is to pull out some of the things that I've written or said about Father Marcus to see where this meets. And uh, here it was, as I read paragraph after paragraph, the feeling that I had in meeting His Grace of the presence of Father Marcus between us was even more accentuated. 
and uh, I'm not going to cover it all, it's too much. But some of the points that I found in my writings and my sayings about Father Marcus, here they are. I said many times about Father Marcus that he is a very simple person in his dealings with us, even though very deep in his teaching. And yesterday I felt that God is sending us someone who is very simple in his talk. I, w I hardly could get his blessing without almost fighting for it. Uh, and uh, he was very deep in some of the things that he said to make us stronger in our faith. Maybe your grace did not notice that, but I was noticing everything because I wanted to say something. So I wanted to, to know you better, your grace. The other thing that uh, uh, jumps to my mind is the humility. Humility of Father Marcus is without question. We all know how humble he is. And throughout yesterday, yesterday's meeting with His Grace, I felt the deep humility is reigning over our meeting. Even when the other bishops came down, so they go out uh, on a trip, that was very apparent. His relationship with the other bishops was based on humility. Then comes the big point about Father Marcus, his sense of humor. Father Marcus had a very peculiar sense of humor, not for everyone. You know what I'm saying. And uh, I felt the same thing with Bishop Archelidis. His sense of humor was very special, was mixed with his humility and his simplicity. So in, uh, in short, I, was, I wanted to say something, which is, I'm sure that Father Marcus had a hand in picking Father Archelidis to become our bishop. I'm sure that he had the saying in that, as he now basks in the love of the saints. And I'm saying that the love of Father Marcus will never be replaced by definite, but definitely you have the criteria, your grace, you have the criteria that uh, Father Marcus chose to uh, pick in the person that comes afterwards to, t to shepherd this flock. And uh, I'm sorry if I spent too much time talking to you now, but we'll have more, more talks about this in the future. We ask you, Your Grace, to always pray for us and uh, you're assured of the love that this congregation had for its shepherds. Uh, now it will have the same love for you because you're a shepherd according to the heart of our first shepherd. Glory be to God forever. With Thank you, Sayyidna.
I ask for your understanding and uh, for your patience. Uh, we're going to switch to segments here. Uh, the documentary film is going to be very dynamic and uh, it will display some fresh uh, clips of today's event. They are working so hard to produce it at the moment as we speak and it will be ready for display in a few minutes. That's why we're going to call upon His Grace Ambayustus. He is the abbot of the, um, the great Saint, Saint Antonius Monastery in Egypt who produced and uh, offered to us our great father, Ambar Shemides. بسم الاب والابن والروح القدس الاله الواحد امين احبائي لقد فرح قلبي كثيرا بالوجود معكم واشعر ان هذا اليوم هو اليوم الذي صنعه الرب فلنفرح ونبتهج فيه بقدوم سيدنا الانبا ارشليدس ليكون اسقف عام في وسطكم نشكر ربنا يا أحبائي أن تم اختياره نتيجة صلواتكم أنتوا أكيد كنتوا بتصلوا كتير فربنا أعطاكم أن يكون بينكم من يرعاكم ربنا يقويه ويحافظ عليه وأحب برضو أشكر قداسة البابا تودروس الثاني على ثقته الكبيرة إذا اختار اتنين من رهبان الدير أنبا إنيانوس ليكون أسقف على بني مزار وأنبا أرشليدس ليكون أسقف عام على تورونتو في وسطكم والحقيقة كان الاختيار ده والمجمع أول مجمع يحضروه كان يوم مفرح خالص لينا وخصوصا يوم ما ننسهوش في دير الأنبا أنطونيوس إذا اعترف المجمع المقدس بقداسة أبونا الراهب القديس يوستوس الأنطوني والقمص بيشوي كامل الحقيقة أنبا أرشليدس ربنا كان بيعده من زمان فهو خدم في أمريكا وقبل الرهبنة كان موجود في نيوجيرسي وجه وترهبن في دير الأنبا أنطونيوس بالبحر الأحمر ومسك أشغال كتيرة في الدير مسك أشغال كتيرة احنا عندنا الراهب يمر على كل أشغال الدير ياخد بركة الكل وربنا أراد أنه يخدم فترة في استراليا وفترة تانية في أمريكا وتم اختياره إن شاء الله وبترتيب إلهي ليكون معكم وأنبا أرشليدس الحقيقة هو إنسان محب جدا وروحه جميلة أرجو أن تقبلوه ليكون في وسطكم وتعاملوه بروح الأبوة وإن كنتم تعاملوه بروح الأبوة فهو سيمسح أرجلكم جميعا ويقدم لكم كل الحب لأنكم بالحقيقة من أول استقباله حتى في المطار شعرت أن حتى لو ما كانش في مقر للأسقفية في كندا لكن قلوبكم جميعا مقر لأسقفيته في داخل قلوبكم جميعا الحقيقة النهاردة يوم مفرح جدا حتى الشمس نشكر ربنا الجو 
جميل جدا وقالوا دي حاجة نادرة في الوقت ده فنشكر ربنا كبيرة ربنا بيحبكم وبيحب ان يكون يفرحكم باستمرار الحقيقة الأسقف هو خادم للكل متشبه يتشبه بالسيد المسيح ليس له غرض إلا أن يجد أولاده في أحضان ربنا يسوع المسيح يسعون إلى خلاص نفوسهم يتقدمون وعيونهم متعلقة بالسماء ونقول إن إحنا كلنا هنا غرباء ونزلاء ووطننا السماوي فوق في السماء والراعي الصالح هو الذي يقود قطيعه إلى السماء فربنا يدي سيدنا الحكمة والقوة والمعونة ويسنده بيمينه لكي يقودكم إلى حياة السماء فحياة السماء هي مشتهى قلوبنا ومن أجل ذلك ذهبنا إلى الرهبنة لكي نطلب أن نعيش في ملكوت السماوات وفردوس النعيم هنا على الأرض كذلك الراعي الصالح يعرف القطيع جميعه والقطيع يعرف صوت راعيه ويقوده إلى موكب نصرة السيد المسيح ويكون لهم لكم نصيبا جميعا في ملكوت السماوات كلكم دقتوا الغربة هنا في كندا لكن احنا من الأول غرباء على الأرض لكن كنايسكو جميلة جدا والأباء بتوعكو ممتازين وكلهم محبة وشعرنا بالمحبة ديا لما تلامسنا مع الكل وتلامسنا معكم فوجدنا كل الحب ربنا يحافظ عليكم وينميكم في النعمة ويبارك حياتكم ونحب طبعا إذا كان أنبا أرشليدس من يعني من رهبان دير الأنبا أنطونيوس فتعتبروا كلكم ليكو دير في مصر اسمه دير القديس العظيم الأنبا أنطونيوس اشرفونا واتباركونا وناخد بركتكم وتتعرفوا على القديسين بتوع الدير وتتشبهوا بيهم وربنا يكون معاكم ويحافظ عليكم وألف مبروك ليك يا سيدنا وألف مبروك لشعب تورونتو بسيدنا ربنا يحافظ عليكم ويقويكم وربنا المجد الدائم من الآن والأبد أمين سيدنا الحبيب في عكاز كده بركة أحب أدو طبعا دي عصر رعاية علشان باستمرار يتذكر أنه راعي صالح يبذل نفسه عن حياتكم ويقودكم لملكوت السماوات ربنا يرميكم في النعمة والبركة وحللنا وباركنا يا سيدنا ألف مبروك Thank you so much, Sayyidna and Bayustas, for this wonderful speech and for the fatherly love that seems to be reciprocating between your grace and the, his grace, Ambar Shalidis. We're so proud of it, and we learn from it. I would like to acknowledge the presence of a very popular personality here among uh, the parishioners of St. Mark. With us, just came despite his pre-planned engagements before, he made the time and came with us. This is... Our mayor, Mr. Frank Scrapetti, would you stand, please? And Mr. Frank Scrapetti is uh, from Italian roots. Uh, he has no choice but to be a Roman Catholic, so we have his boss here with us, too. <laughs> okay. 
Um, I would like also to acknowledge the great effort that was done behind the scenes. Many people have been working so diligently to make this blessed event the, the success it is as we notice it now. We have a committee of priests that have been working ever since Ambar Shalis was ordained. Sometimes I would call them one and two o'clock in the morning, whether we were in Egypt or here. And the committee consisted of our beloved father, Abuna Misail, and uh, Abuna Yusuf Andraus, and Abuna Yusuf Iskandar, and Abuna John Magarius. Every time I start to call Ab Abuna John Magarius, it would be around midnight to two o'clock in the morning. We thank you so much for your hard work. It's really appreciated. I would, I would like also to thank the ushering committee and the security committee. They have done a great job in organizing this great day. Thank you all. And now it's time to watch the uh, docu documentary film that reviews the, uh, the great and the very eventful history of Ambar Shalidis, whether he was in the monastic life or uh, ministering all over the world. The churches of the Greater Toronto Area welcome His Grace Bishop Archilides. His grace was born in 1964, in Alexandria, Egypt, and was named Michael Musa. His grace joined St. Anthony Monastery in 1996, and was ordained as a monk in 1999, and then ordained as a priest in 2012. His Grace served as a priest in Europe, USA, and Australia for several years. On July 5, 2022, by the grace of God, His Holiness Pope Tawadros II ordained Father Archilidis El Antoni as General Bishop Archilidis for the Archdiocese of Toronto. <laughs> Amen.
اسقفا عما بالكنيسة القبطية الأرزوكسية خن براني من بيوتنا شيرن بابن ما يسواب ونوتي نوتي في زماروت نجيب نوتي بيوت بيان تكراتور أمين
now, Sayedna, it's a great honor and privilege uh, to announce to you the moment we've all been waiting for to hear a word from His Grace and <laughs> himself. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Glory to the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, now, forever, Amen. From the bottom of my heart, we ask our Lord to reward, compensate everybody toil and had hard time to come over here, sharing and showing his love and care. The people here in the church from many countries, and they come to share the love to the Lord Jesus Christ to my weakness. First of all, I thank my Lord Jesus Christ. He made me the unworthy servant to serve his name. As in First Timothy chapter 1, 12, God used me. I am an unworthy servant to serve his name. So it's a great honor from the Lord to choose my weakness to serve in Toronto. May God bless you all. Uh, I deliver to you the love of His Holiness. And I meet with Him during the five months I was in Egypt. All the time I was with His Holiness. And uh, finally I stay, I stay with Him. And I also wonder that he remember all the details about Canada. He spoke to me from ordaining Abu Namur'us, Mur'us, 1964. And he drew the map to me of Canada, explained to me every church, every father, and all the details. So I deliver the love and care to His Holiness, Bob Tawadros, to every and each one of you. We cannot forget the love of His Grace, Bishop Amma Ma'ar, and his toil traveling back and forth all the time. We really thank you, Sayyidina, and we ask the Lord to compensate you with the heavenly reward. Thank you so much. We thank His Grace and Bayustos since we entered to the monastery and He held my hand as a young child and they teach me the monastic life and teach us the virtue, how to pray, how to fast, and how to conduct, you know, the, the, our virtue. We thank him so much. He has a great uh, suffer to come over here. Thank you, Sayyidina, so much for your coming. <clears throat> we thank his grace, Amber Peter, that he always encouraged us and guide us and, uh, you know, advise us. Uh, thank him so much for his love, for care, and for uh, ask the word to reward him by the heavenly reward. We ask all the eminence, uh, his eminence, Amba Yusuf. I know he has a convention. He called the day of the convention about the family, and he came especially to attend here, and he's coming back to the convention. Thank you, Sayyidina, so much. We ask all the bishops that they toil and they come here, and that was, we have a conference in Egypt, seminar of the bishop. We've been there for a few days. It was very hectic and hard from early in the morning to late in the night. So thank them so much that they come and they show their love and their respect. We thank all the ambassador and uh, everybody come, all the fathers, all the bishops, all the hegumens, uh, which uh, some of the fathers, they came from America and the many other places, like Father Dawood Bipawi and Father Shunuda 
and uh, Father Raphael and all the other fathers, they came from far distant. Uh, I really appreciate so much and uh, we have a great love for them and really we love you and appreciate your effort. Thank you so much. They asked me in the beginning to prepare a word, but I refuse. I'm not going to say a word, and I not prepare a word. I would like to tell you whatever it comes in my heart, and just I would like to deliver it to you. The Lord, He is a good shepherd. And the good shepherd, He has a rod and a stake in His hand. Not to conquer His sheep, but to guide, to protect, and to lift up you know, all the sheep to care and to offer food and nourishment to them. And this, the bishop, he is a shepherd. So the bishop, St. John Chrysostom, he said, the bishop, he is overseer. He looked from above, but he have to lean down, to come down and to lift up everybody. So I come to Toronto here, not as a bishop, but as a shepherd, shepherd, to ship, you know, all the people and to guide them for the way of God. Also, I would like to tell you that I come here as a father for every tiny Winnie and every single one. I don't have any groups, I don't have anybody, thank God, I don't know anybody. I never came to Canada before. This is the first time to come to Canada. So, my heart is open to everybody, and my bottom is every, open to everybody, because the main job of the bishop, he the father. Father for everyone, to carry the burden of everyone. So I will deliver to you my phone, so I'm available 24-7. So uh, they don't feel bad to contact me anytime. I know we are behind the schedule, but I would like to you. The Lord appeared to King Solomon twice, and he asked him, Solomon, what are you asking? What should I give you? And Solomon, he said, Lord, you make me a ruler today over a huge number of people, and I am a young child. I don't know what to do. So please give me wisdom and the certain heart to distinguish between good and bad. And the Lord was so happy. Uh, I will read it to you. Now, O oh Lord, my God, you have made me your servant and king, Instead of my father David, but I am a little child, I do not know how to go out or to come in. And your servant is the made servant of your people who you have chosen, a great people, to numerous, to number counted. Therefore, give to your servant understanding heart to judge your people that it may discern between good and evil, for who is able to judge these great people in yours? So the speech pleased to the Lord of Solomon, and he asked these things. And I'm asking the Lord, and I'm asking you to pray in my behalf for the Lord to give me wisdom and the understanding to can rule over these people and lead them to the way of the Lord Jesus Christ. The bishop he is an open bosom. He is caring, loving, father. So there is a certain rules come to the bishop and there are certain rules come to you guys. So please the desire of my heart and the desire of the Lord Jesus Christ is the unity. 
I don't want to. I don't want to know that there is North Canada or South or Central Canada. We are all one in Christ, one heart, one in the Lord Jesus Christ. I know there is a lot of thing in my heart, and there is much more in my mind. But I will let the days deliver my message to you, not by words. But by act. From the bottom of my heart, we ask the Father, they prepare for this ceremony, the deacon, the kashafa, the shamamsa, the khuddam, the shanter, the choirs, everybody, they spend a great deal of effort to, to present this ceremony in a beautiful way that it was. May the Lord reward them all with the heavenly reward. We ask you to pray for me as much as I pray for you. We ask that we have the unity of the heart, that we work together, that, as I mentioned before, we are one team. If the team have team <laughs> Thank you so much, deacons. Uh, now we're going to switch two parts again. We're going to take that group photo with all the dignitaries and the, the officials who are with us. Actually, we'll be still facing the east. We'll bring chairs for our father, the bishops, to be seated here. And the entire cathedral will be in the photo. But before doing that, and as we do that, I would like to confess publicly two mistakes I committed today so my father could give me the absolution. That would be the strongest absolution I've ever received in my life. I slipped on my mind uh, in my haste to prepare the, br the brochure of the event to uh, list on it uh, my dear father, Amba Serafim, who came specifically driving all the way from Detroit to be with us today. Forgive me, Sayyidna. And the other mistake that slipped my mind that one of the instrumental members of the organizing committee was Father Thomas Hanna. God bless him, he's with us. Forgive me, Father.
Christ our Lord, be Christus penuti. Amen. O King of peace, grant us your peace, establish your peace for us, and forgive us our sin. The thine, the kingdom, the glory, the might forever. I mean, make us worthy, O Lord, to pray thankfully. Our Father, Father who, who art, art in, in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. In Christ Jesus, our Lord. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Love of God the Father, the grace of his only begotten Son, our Lord, God, and Savior, Jesus Christ, the fellowship and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Go in peace, and the peace of the Lord be with you all. And with your Amen. Salam, Rabbi, Akum, And now there will be a presentation of keepsakes and an exchange of gifts between the bishops. Oh, 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 oh,
سيدنا هيسلم علينا بكره في الجداس سيدنا بس بيسلم على الاباء الزوار والرسميين وبكره في الجداس هيسلم علينا كلنا بعد اذنكم انت والاباء الكهنه الاباط برضه هيسلموا على سيدنا تحت انت انت سيديو انو his grace is greeting all the distinguished guests and he'll he'll greet the rest of the congregation all tomorrow in the liturgy. Peace.
Oh. 